of Big Low. Jonathan, let me ask you a question. What is your, oh, right, sick. What makes you want to use the particle of negation ing in your, in your facts? Think, think about that. If you can answer me that in the, in the comments or in the chat here, why do you choose to use particles of negation in your facts? You weren't thinking. I'd have to say that that is not correct. Everyone is always thinking. If you're, if you're conscious and you're typing or doing whatever, you're thinking, always thinking. Thought never ceases. Never ceases. If your thought ceases and you're not thinking, then I'd check your pulse because you're probably not here anymore. <laughs> Hello, the no choice man. If anybody wants to leave, wants to ask a question about correct sentence structure or whatever, feel free to. I will answer your questions. Uh, I think Jonathan Todd knows that I'm just razzing him a little bit. How about hello? Sure. For the salutation. For the high. <laughs> or if you're a member of the uh, Syntax Learning Center or Red Thumb Club or any variation thereof, you could just put a full colon and then put hello hyphen how hyphen the hyphen hell hyphen r hyphen you question mark. You can do that if you want to use quantum gobbledygook. I am new to this world and happy I found it. Okay, which which world is that? Are you, are you talking about the world of quantum grammar? Welcome. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. I can tell you that there are 900-ish videos on this channel that you can study and uh, learn at your own pace. Maybe world is not the correct word yet, this world. Oh, sure, I knew what you meant. I knew what you meant. It's just my mind goes, snaps automatically to the literal, most literal, straightforward translation of everything. And sometimes it's, for me, you know, with all humility, it's difficult to slip back into that fiction mindset of this, that, or the third. Uh you have heavy shoulders, my friend, carrying on the legacy of David Miller. Well, you know what? No choice, man. I appreciate that sentiment. I really do. I know where it comes from, man. But rest assured, I am carrying on no legacy. I am not carrying a legacy. Not going to, you know... I, there is no comparison between myself and Colin David Ivan and Colin Miller. Really, there is none. Um, I was blessed to be able to communicate with David on a one-to-one -one level via phone calls and Skypes and things like that <clears throat> during the last year of his life. And um, I'm not even on nowhere near that level of whatever he was. I just do my own thing and um, hopefully do honor the correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, technology by teaching it in its most basic and correct form. Hopefully that's what I'm doing here. All honor to the master, Colin David Ivan Wink, Colin Miller. And by master, I don't mean he's 
my master, because because I am my master. There is no other master but me, as far as I'm concerned. But I mean the master of this domain of grammar. He brought it forth. He brought it to all of us. If it wasn't for him, there would be no colon Jason hyphen Matthew colon Glass. There would be no colon Russell hyphen J colon Gould. There would be no colon Mark hyphen lowercase K Kishon colon Christopher or any of these people. There would be none of us without DWM. I can't see what others are typing for some reason. That's interesting. I can't see from your end, so I'm, I have no idea. I, I do know that there's a YouTube will give you a choice of top comments or newest comments or something like that, or all comments. I would definitely choose all comments or newest comments. My mother tongue is Hebrew. Awesome. So if anybody out there has any questions, feel free to put them in this chat. And I will answer them as best they can. Now you can ask grammar questions. That's my favorite thing to do is answer grammar questions. However, if you have any other questions, I would definitely be open to answer those. I didn't see a video regarding usage of brackets. Your glass for your correct name. Please elaborate. Well, Jonathan, how hard did you search for that? Because I have explained that numerous times on numerous occasions, and of course, I don't mind explaining it now. But if you write out a sentence, like uh, if you write out a title, like, uh, for the video of the Jason hyphen Matthew colon space glass period. Is that correct? Is that correct sentence structure? For the video of the Jason hyphen Matthew colon space glass period. Is that correct sentence structure? Oh, your answer is no? Very good. Tell me why it's not correct sentence structure, please. Ooh, we've got another question here. A question about Live Life Claim. Are there any other $1 stamps, real dollar, two bars, either than red fox stamp? I ask this since if I live in another country, are there other two bar stamps? Um... As far as I know, Red Fox is the only gold-backed stamp, which is what I think you may be saying. That's why there's two bars through the S in the dollar sign, because it's gold-backed. But you don't, I mean, it does add more weight to the document, but you don't necessarily need that. You can just use a regular $1 whole number denomination stamp. You can use a $2 denomination stamp. As long as it's a whole number, it cannot be a fractional value because one and one is one with correct sentence structure. Honestly, I haven't searched. I just noticed you started using it recently. Yes, probably in the last year, actually. So for you, it may be recently. I guess it depends upon how often you visit this channel or how often you see my new videos, but it's been quite a while since I've been doing it. But I, I'm, I'm asking you why you think it's not correct. For the video of the Jason hyphen Matthew colon space glass period, why isn't that correct sentence structure? Because it separates the authority unless maybe you are underlined the complete name. No, there is no underline. No underline available for this. It's just for the video of the Jason hyphen Matthew colon space glass. And what do you mean by separates the authority? I'm not sure what that means. But I will give you a hint. It has to do with positional sequencing. It has to do with the concatenation. 
the limitations of the YouTube platform uh, caused me to start using the brackets in that scenario. For the, of the, with the, by the gets interrupted. That's the answer I was seeking, the cause. Well, if you look at a, a sentence like for the, well, actually it's not a sentence. It's a name or it's a title. For the video of the Jason hyphen Matthew Cohen space glass. If you read it out, it's for the video of the Jason hyphen Matthew with the glass, which is not correct because you could, you must have two positional audio fact phrases. And then if it's a title or a name, it ends, it's done there. But because there's another colon there after the Matthew, it continues. So that means there should be a verb there, but there isn't, that's why it's not correct. So the reason why on platforms like YouTube that don't allow underlining in titles or in descriptions, I started using the brackets to put the colon space glass in brackets so it didn't interrupt the, the concatenation, the positional sequencing, right? So I hope that answers your question. And the question that Jonathan asked, and I'll say this to everybody out there, any question you have, any grammar question can be answered literally by looking at my videos. I have not come across one question that's been asked in a comments field that cannot be answered in a video already posted on this channel. The sum total of my correct sentence structure knowledge is available on this channel. There are no secrets or tricks. I don't hide anything from you. Yes, I do provide correct sentence structure workshops to those who are serious about learning this grammar. And by serious, meaning they're willing to put something into it to get something out of it. Nothing, with my perception and my experience, nothing positive comes without sacrifice, without investing something. So that's how the principle, rule one, rule equal, on which the workshops that I offer are based upon. However, having said that, everything that I teach in the workshops is available for free on this YouTube channel. It's just up to you to put forth the effort to search it out. Perfect. Lee, David says LY is wrong to write. Well, LY is considered a particle of negation, yes. It's the only suffix that actually modifies the tangible condition of state of a fact-based word to a non-tangible condition of state. And you can certify that by looking it up in an etymology dictionary. And I do have several videos on that, so you can definitely do a YouTube search on uh, hyphen LY in, on my channel, and you will find a few videos on that. As I said, any grammar question you have can be answered by looking through my videos. And of course, again, if you're serious about this, contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and apply for a workshop. I have a whole curriculum I've been teaching for six years. What'll happen is you'll email me. I'll send you back a response and offer you a video consultation. An offer for you to step up onto the geometric level playing field of contract, meaning you can see who I am, I can see who you are, and you can ask me whatever you want to. And we'll find out if you are actually serious about doing this, in which case I will create and authorize a correct sentence structure contract and send it out to you and we will go from there. Have you seen the movie, The Beekeeper yet? No, I have not. I have not. And you know what? 
if we're going to go with titles here, the title that I would choose as far as this uh, context goes, I mean, be steward. I don't keep bees. I'm a steward of the bees. That's the way I like to look at it. Well, actually, since you're just speaking an adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble, it doesn't matter whether you hyphenate anything or any, anything like that. If your volition is to be understood, it's my volition to understand you. So it's fine. Tell him, Hector. Say, Me llamo Hector Oscar Pablo Pancho Chapito Papito Escobar. That's actually his name. His name is Hector Oscar Pablo Pancho Chapito Papito Escobar. You can call him Hector. Well, if you look at the word important, like if you look at it, do forensics on it, analyze it, I am means no. Then you have port, which we know what a port is. And then we have ant, which in this context is a suffix a word forming element meaning contract. So important literally means a, uh, no contract with a port. <laughs> and if you're wondering why I am means no, well, first of all, it's a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word. That automatically is no contract. If you go further into it, important means no port contract. Just like um, impotent means not potent. So there you go. Continuance of the evidence. I can back up every claim that I make grammatically. And it's very important to do if you want to use this and be successful with it in the quote unquote real world. To be cheeky and for knowledge cultivation purposes, how about a live life claim from Hector with his right paw print? LOL. Well, actually, that's not cheeky at all. Um, if I had a reason to do that, I could do that. I know folks that have contacted me that have, um, in the fiction world, expensive, expensive uh, investments in animals such as horses, and they created live life claims for their horses, which they do not view as property. They do not view them as something to be bought and sold. They view them as companions. And so they create a live life claim for their horses. And that's just basically to protect their construct from fiction legal folks who may be trying to harm them bureaucratically in relation to these horses, whether they're competitive horses or what. So that's actually not cheeky at all, Jonathan. That's actually an actual real thing. I've I've helped people create live life claims for their beloved companions. Remember, maintenance of rule one, rule equal. As above, so below. Do the same thing and perform the same in big things as small things. Rule one, rule equal. Every living creature is a living creature, whether it's a dog, a horse, a feline, whatever it is. They're all living and breathing creatures. So in my, with my knowledge and perception, I would say that if one was to create a live life claim for their home companion, i.e. their quote unquote pet, which I don't like that word pet, but uh, you could do that in the same way that you would do that for your uh, children. Meaning you would be the postmaster, federal judge, bank banker, authority of their live life claim, you would autograph over the stamps and thumbprint and all that stuff. You would take authority over them because they don't know correct sentence structure and hypothetically you do. If you do know it, 
which I'm not sure any of the 11 people in this chat have closure on the grammar. I don't think any of them do. But if any of you are serious about learning it, contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and apply for workshops right away because what better time than now to learn this grammar? Better to have it than not need it, than need it and not have it. Well, Jonathan, how important is closure on this grammar to you? Most folks that I that I do workshops with, if they're a beginner, it usually takes them about five or six workshops on average to get closure on the grammar. I've had people learn it in one workshop, one 60-minute session, and they've learned the grammar. Boom, done. But that's not the norm. Usually it's five to six workshops. Some people have taken dozens of workshops and they still don't know the grammar. It just depends upon you and how serious you are. How important it is. Because of course, you're only going to prioritize what is important to you. Like I say all the time, you know, I have a lot of uh, viewers that have been on this channel and commenting for a long time, for a year or two, and they've never taken a workshop. And they basically ask the same questions a year or two ago that, they, that they're asking now, meaning it's very, very difficult if you're not really super motivated to learn this on your own. Most folks, 99.9% uh, of folks need a tutor. I would have never learned this on my own if I wouldn't have had a tutor. And I'm very glad I invested in that and I committed to that because now I have closure. Funds are the issue. I'm restructuring my business right now, so no income. Well, I mean, it's definitely like the way I look at it like this, like, uh, let me see, how can I put this? When I was learning this, it was important to me. I felt it was important to me to learn this. So I had to prioritize it. I had to sacrifice and do without some things in order to learn it, in order to invest what I needed to invest to learn it, taking risks and so on and so forth. But of course, <laughs> eating and having a roof over one's health, uh, house is important. It's very important to have a stable learning environment with which to cultivate your knowledge. So for sure, I mean, that is most important. There is no doubt about it. But other than that, it's just prioritized. If you don't have a reason to learn it, then you're probably going to find reasons not to learn it. You're probably going to find reasons why you can't do it if you don't want to learn it. But the bright side of that is that the sum total of my knowledge is on this channel, and you're more than welcome to study it whenever you want to study it. Like you said about your question about the brackets, that you said, well, I didn't really look for it. Well, that's the thing. You have to put forth the effort, either which way, whether you're investing in workshops or whether you're investing in now space in studying the videos. Either way, it's an investment you, you have to be willing to make. This does not come easy. This does not come quick. From my experience, this comes with a struggle and a challenge. And most people, from my experience of six years of teaching this, most people will find every excuse in the book not to do it. Even though they say they want to do it, they find every excuse not to do it because they want it handed to them. If it doesn't come quick and easy, then uh, they're not going to do it. 
unless of course they're embroiled in some sort of court case in which case they email me and desperately want me to help them and they promise to pay me afterwards after they win <laughs> right i was born at night but not last night bro um so it's good to be in a place where you can have a stable environment to study it and to reflect and not be stressed out about anything. If you're stressed out about how you're going to feed your kids, how you're going to keep a roof over your head, that's probably not the best uh, environment to learn this. Jonathan, do you have a live life claim? Out of curiosity, do you have a correct live life claim, a correct claim of the live life? So on another topic, reaching out to my viewership out there who are watching right now, if any of you are familiar with Mark Lowercase K. Kishon Christopher, or if any of you follow Mark, I have a question for you. Where, where's he been? Do you know where he's been? Because I haven't seen any new content posted by him on any internet social media platform. Not on Rumble, uh, not on Steemit, not on his own website. I've not seen anything from Mark Lowercase K. It's almost like he's vanished from the face of the earth. And I just wondered if anybody out there had any uh, news about that fellow. I do, but it has errors as I was assisted by the Purple Thumb Club who referred me to you. I think you mean the Purple Thumb community. But uh, yeah, actually, interesting story there, Jonathan. Uh, I did help the Purple Thumb community. I helped Lady Crown with that live life claim. I actually wrote the whole thing for them under certain terms and conditions, which unfortunately she violated several of the terms and conditions of our agreement and so i broke bulk with them and they they basically modified it and changed it and really just made a mess of it so it's no longer correct sentence structure whatever it is they offered i, I don't certify it at all i think mark k is only teaching via email and private communications And that's interesting, Jonathan, because this is a guy who makes his living and his money from social media. Like he has a much larger following than I do. He has many more people who communicate and get involved with him. He makes literally thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars off of his Internet presence. And to just stop doing that doesn't make any sense to me. That doesn't add up. For someone that I know, like Mark, which I did actually get to know in 2017-2018, Purple Thumb community does not know correct sentence structure. None of them have closure on it or any idea how to use it. That I can guarantee you 100%. Whatever they do has nothing to do with correct sentence structure. Whether it's good or bad, whatever, I mean, that remains to the eye of the beholder, but it has nothing to do with correct sentence structure, I can tell you that. So about Mark Lord Case K, the only thing I can think of is either he was forcibly removed and taken to an undisclosed location by undisclosed uh, parties or he's just chosen to lay low. Who knows? Actually, I'm pretty sure I know what happened to him, but I'm not gonna say. It's not my place to say. I just wondered if any of you out there knew. If someone is out there literally ripping people off, if they're claiming 
to teach or offer something, a product, and repeatedly, whatever it is they're offering, if they're getting money for that and people pay them money, but the people aren't getting the product that's being offered or it's, it's false advertising, eventually that individual is going to be stopped by the fiction. The fiction system itself may be slow to act, but they will step in and stop it. Okay, he still makes videos. Please give me a link to his most recent video because I've been looking and I have not seen any new videos from Mark Kishon Christopher. Literally, I've not seen any new content from him in like six months. So if you're claiming that he still makes videos, please share a link to prove your claim that he still makes videos. They're all private. Well then, what good is that? It's like I say about classified documents and things like that. It's of no use to any of us because we're looking at rule one, rule equal. Awesome. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that and I, I will keep it confidential. I give you my word on that. But I would just like to see some new content just to see what, he, what he's been up to. I got an email on April 17th. Wow. I knew that some of you folks followed him, but I didn't I didn't think someone like Jonathan would would still be following Marcus Sean Christopher. It's like the only time that I think about him is when someone brings it up to me and someone brought it up to me a few weeks ago talking about, well, they haven't heard anything from him actually months ago. And I looked into it and I was like, well, wow, that's true. I wonder where Mark is. I wonder what happened to him. Some folks said he was in jail. Who knows? He does have a team. Just because you get an email from Mark Sean Christopher doesn't actually mean it's an email from Mark Sean Christopher. You know what I mean? Back in 2017, when I first started learning or trying to learn this stuff, I actually signed up for Mark's courses because I was so serious about it and I couldn't find anyone to teach me. Every single individual I reached out to that had a colon and a hyphen in their name did not want to teach me. Now I know why, because none of them had closure on the grammar, none of them. They talked the talk, but they couldn't walk the walk. And then I contacted Mark and started taking his six-week course, or was it 12-week course, 12-week course, which is actually where I met Raven. And I soon found out that Mark talked the talk as well, but didn't walk the walk, as far as the grammar goes. So I'm glad I did that. That's the kind of individual that, that I usually am, you know, in scenarios like that. I got to find out. I got to test the waters. I got to find out if you're real or not. If someone makes claims, I'm going to challenge them and say, prove it. Basically, folks, I'm just making conversation here. Um, you can change, you, you can adjust the course of our conversation just by asking a question. And that's what I'm asking you to do. Just participate with this chat. Uh, don't be a spectator. Just come forward and ask questions. If you have a question on your mind, go ahead and ask it. I'm more than happy to talk about whatever you want to talk about. You know what? This morning I got up and I said, you know, I want to do a comments video because I got a lot of comments to get to. I haven't done a comments video in a long time since before I had my surgery. And so I did a whole like 45 minute comments video. And then I went to edit it and found out that all 45 minutes had no audio. How discouraging is that, folks? <sighs> I 
sometimes the cosmos likes to uh, hold on surgery I can help you heal with seawater plasma I can give a lot of knowledge about it well thank you for that offer Oki you know what I find um, I find that when someone says that they've had surgery or they have problems that automatically folks assume and presume that the individual that said that is asking for some sort of help which I'm definitely not asking for any help, although I do appreciate the sentiment behind what you're offering. Um, I am little over half a century old. I don't know everything, but I know my body pretty well. And so while I appreciate what you're saying, yes, um, salt water and all that stuff is good, no sugar is good. Uh oh. <laughs> so I appreciate all that stuff, but I just want to point that out that uh, just because someone says that they had surgery or something doesn't mean they're asking for help. Please don't take offense at that. Please don't uh, think that I'm picking on you or anything. I automatically go into the correct sentence structure tutor uh, frame of mind. No assumption, no presumption. That's like, for example, my tutor Raven. Raven is a brother to me. And I can tell him, like, I had surgery. Uh, I have this problem or that problem. He never, ever offers anything to me. He just listens to me and wishes me well on my journey. The only time he will offer help or anything like that is if I ask him to, because contract is by consent. If you just sit there and start, you know, on the internet, just people just seem to want to do that. Like if someone says, oh, you know, I feel depressed today. All of a sudden people will just start saying, well, did you do this? You need to do this. This is the diet. This is the psychological thing this type of crystal or this type of meditation or whatever. All the person did was say they were depressed and then people assume, oh, well, they want help or they need help, which is not the case. With correct sentence structure, we never assume anything. We only look at the facts. So that's why I don't do that anymore. The only time I offer help to someone is if they ask contract is by consent so thank you for for that sentiment Oki. i do appreciate your uh what you're offering and the volition behind it and i also appreciate that you gave me a chance to teach some of the correct sentence structure psychology which is void of presumption assumption I think I still get emails from Russell's folks in Canada, but the only time I hear about anyone else is via your reaction videos. <laughs> me too. The only time I hear about it is when someone sends me a Russell video, like, look at this. Look at this, look at what this Yahoo's doing now, you know, or something like that. Not the name call. All right. Not the name call. I'm just repeating what was said to me in an email. Old does not exist. How so? How does old not exist? How does young not exist? These are measuring factors. It's a way of explaining something. Like if you are going to eat food and someone says, that's old food. Don't eat it. And then you say, well, old doesn't exist. And then you go and eat it, and then you get sick from it. Why did you get sick? Because old doesn't exist? Well, obviously old does exist. You see what I'm saying?
I think the urge to offer people things all the time is part of the fiction indoctrination and paragraphing. Bingo, Jonathan. That is exactly right. That is exactly correct. It's just like the same voli uh, the same uh, volition where people automatically want to tell others what they should or shouldn't do. We are programmed to do that. We are programmed to tell other people what they should or shouldn't do because that's what the quote unquote government does with us by mandating things, telling us that our children should have this inoculation or that inoculation. Your child can't go to school if they don't have this inoculation or that inoculation. And it's just subtle ways of coercing you into doing things. Now, contract is by consent. All right. For example, when I was enrolling my daughter in school, they said that because she was not vaccinated, that she could not attend school. So I went right down to the health department with my sea pass, sea treaty, my live life claim, all my ship's papers. I went in there with all of my correct sentence structure knowledge, went right to the front desk, ready to go to war. And I said, I'm here because the school that I've enrolled my child in refuses to allow her to go to school if she doesn't have these vaccinations. And right away, she took one look at me and took one look at like my demeanor and everything, because I must have been pretty damn serious. And she said, oh, so you want a waiver? And I was like, yeah, sure. She's like, here you go. You can either choose religious reasons or like private reasons or something. I was like, that's all I got to do? <laughs> okay. So I... Uh, just use the other selection as the reason. And then what I did was I autographed it and put my live life claim number on there. And then I put, I think something on there to the effect of, if you have any questions about the reason why I'm writing my name like this, feel free to reach out to me. And I put my phone number on there. And my child went to school with zero vaccinations so it's, a contract is by consent and usually in the fiction there are solutions if you look for them you don't even have to resort to correct sentence structure in a lot of cases it's actually law merchant posing this common law i don't understand what that means they're both just adjective pronouns to me. Like if I think of the term, the adjective pronoun law merchant, it makes me think of someone who's selling or bartering or trading law, which law and legalities are all fiction concepts. They don't figure into my construct. Common law makes sense to me in the sense that if you go to a location, there is a law there that is common to everybody, which may be different than this other location or that location over there. What is common there is not common over here, is not common here, but may be common there. So it's all subjective. <laughs> we getting into Latin now? What, what's... <laughs> Let's let's stick to plain simple English for a minute here. Even though plain simple English comes from mostly comes from Latin. Let's stick with the most basic language you can think of. Because as Samuel Clemens once said, if you can't explain it to a 5-year-old then you probably don't know what the hell you're talking about. I think I've told the story about how I had folks that were very well versed in common law 
or common lore come to me wanting to learn correct sentence structure because their common law was not working anymore. They were beginning to fail using it. But unfortunately, most of those folks could not set their common law ideals aside to participate with the facts. And so they did not get closure on the grammar. They came close, but they did not get closure. Lex Mercatoria is the bullcrap source of law merchant. The fiction treats everyone as though they are merchants' merchandise. Hmm. I can see validity in that. Validity in that. Um, here's the thing about that, you know, about treating people. You know, I like to treat my children to ice cream every once in a while, right? So the fiction treats us as merchandise. <laughs> but if you're a live life claimant, I mean, they can treat me however they want to treat me. What they get in return is directly in proportion to what they gave me, which is just like the rule one rule equal with the workshops and stuff. What you put in is what you get out. Trick or treat. Hey, that's funny. That's funny. I like that. That's why they call it tricks and traps, I guess. Like when David Wynn Miller used to say that he sat down with the Honorable William Reinquist, who took his robe off and came down and taught him all the secrets of federal judges. It just makes me think. I mean, people automatically, you know, because lots of people hero worship David Wynn Miller, they put him on a pedestal. They think, wow, you know, David Wynn Miller knows the secrets of the federal judges. Well, guess what? If that's the case, if that really happened, those secrets are still secret and they don't pertain to you and I because that is a violation of rule one rule equal. Secrets are a violation of rule one rule equal. That is exactly why everything I teach in my workshops is available for free on my YouTube channel for rule one rule equal. There are no secrets or tricks. I don't hide anything from anyone, knowledge-wise. So that is what has kept me safe from interlopers, is to make sure that I'm not withholding anything and putting it behind a paywall. Because everything that I know about grammar is available for free on this YouTube channel. I've done that from the beginning, and I'm so glad that I did. There are other folks out there who will not share anything with you until you pay them. That is not the case here. So you got to ask yourself, really, I mean, when you look at these other folks, what is their, what, what is their goal? Yes, those secrets are not helping anyone. No more secrets. True. And really, though, okay, those are secrets that pertain to the fiction system. If you're going to go to that dance in that foreign vessel and dry dock, if you are going to participate with that, then those secrets can be used against you for detrimental effect. But if you learn correct sentence structure and you learn how to level the geometric level field of contract, those secrets don't matter. Not one bit. They can have all the secrets they want. Who cares? Here's the geometric level plane. You want to go? Come on up here. Let's talk facts. I'm ready. Are you? And 9.9 .9 times out of 10, they are not ready. 
They will not come up onto the geometric level playing field of contract and they will dismiss it. They will want to be get away from you as fast as they can. Because one thing they don't want is full closure. Or as in the fiction, they would say full disclosure. I personally dislike the term agents. Personally, just because like folks like Russell J. Gould in the past have called me They've slandered me and called me some sort of agent. I'm an agent. Agent of what? <laughs> they don't even know me. You know, they, they, whatever. Corporate fictions can't participate with the or any facts. Corporate fictions. Well, it's not that they can't participate, it's that they won't, because then that removes their superiority. The superiority that they have is the adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fictitious conveyance of grammar. I can't tell you how many people have contacted me about their mortgages or about how they're about to be kicked out of their house they're going to lose their house, blah, 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 blah. Agent, not a gentleman. Where'd you hear that? Uh, to go back to what I was talking about, um, and this is the part that most people don't want to hear. If you have a mortgage and you're quote unquote underwater and you can't make your mortgage payments, Correct sentence structure is not probably not going to help you in that situation. Reason being, contract is by consent. If you agreed to a mortgage, if you put your signature on there, That, is, that implies that you read the contract. Did you read the contract? Do you understand the contract? If you do, then you write your name on there. Your signature, whatever it is. This is we're talking volition here, folks. We're not talking correct grammar. We're talking volition. So it was your volition to honor that contract, that adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, Bible contract. You read the contract, you understand it, because if you didn't understand it, it's contingent upon you to ask questions. You agreed to it. And now, years later, all of a sudden, you want to get out of it because you can't make the payments that you agreed to make because you didn't read the contract. Do you see what I'm saying? It's a very subtle psychological condition of state that most people don't want to hear about. That's the part that people shy away from because their mentality is they want to get out of something, which is not correct psychology. Did any of you folks out there uh, watch a channel called Law Talk with Mike? I actually did a Coral Blake Grotto reaction video to one of his videos. He's supposedly an attorney. I don't know if he really is or he isn't. He certainly puts out a lot of YouTube content, so I have to believe that he's not a very successful attorney, if so. But he has a very successful YouTube channel. You ought to check it out sometime because he does a lot of sovereign citizen videos. He makes fun of them, and it, it is kind of funny. I have found, outside of the Russell J. Gould folks, the folks that follow Romley Stewart are some of the rudest people I have ever run into in my life. Just the rudest, inconsiderate, uncouth, zero etiquette, 
foul-mouthed folks. And as my granddaddy used to say, what comes out of someone's mouth is a direct reflection of what's inside them. So if you're going to use foul language, curse words all the time, that's a direct reflection of your inner being. My granddaddy was a wise man. Of course, I, from time to time, will use curse words. But you don't hear every other word out of my mouth being a curse word. I will use it for effect. Sort of like, um, <laughs> to use my favorite analogy for martial arts or hand-to-hand -hand combat, when you are in the midst of a confrontation, if you are an experienced uh, fighter, not every strike that you throw is going to be 100%. You may throw 50% or 40% so that you don't get tired, only using the force that is necessary. But sometimes you do got to put that 100% in there. And that's kind of how I look at like cuss words or trigger words. I will use them for effect, to have an effect on my opponent or the other individual, one way or the other, if I'm trying to protect myself, just like with martial arts. It's the difference between throwing a left jab and a straight left. And if you know fighting, you know what I mean. As far as the future of this YouTube channel, I'm not sure. Because of the surgery and stuff, I haven't really been posting too much stuff on here. But these live streams, this one, uh, not, not counting this one, but the other live streams that I've done have not gotten very many views. And the viewership on this channel has actually dropped. Now, there's no one out there that's going to claim accountability for that other than me, all right? For whatever reason, the content, people aren't wanting to see the content. The live streams, people aren't wanting to participate. They're not wanting to ask questions. Um, people have said to me that maybe I should try this or that, different uh, marketing techniques. But I don't really wanna cheapen this grammar in that way. Like, I don't want to try and use the dangling carrot technique to get people to view this channel. I really don't. I don't want to cheapen the grammar in that way. I really only want the people that are serious about learning the grammar to come here. And not only do I want them to come here, I want them to participate. I want them to step up and come into the chat and talk about whatever they want to talk about. Like, I just looked at my counter. We have like a 12 people here. And not one freaking person is commenting right now. Not one person is asking a question. Not one person is saying anything. Why is that? It's a mystery to me as a YouTube content creator. I have no idea. I feel kind of silly sometimes just sitting here talking into a sea of space. I can see that there are about a dozen people here, but none of them are, are participating. So with the maintenance of rule one, rule equal, why would I want to continue doing stuff like this if no one's going to participate with it? Folks, I'm not, I'm not asking for your sympathy or anything like that. I'm just literally being straightforward and blunt. Why would someone want to continue something like that? If... I would have had someone like myself available in 2017 when I was learning this. If I would have had someone like myself going live and doing live streams and accepting questions off the cuff, man, I'd have been here every single time. 
I'd have my notifications on, I'd be subscribed, I'd like every video, and I'd write down questions and ask. And I would try and challenge the person. I would actually try and trip them up. I would try and pose a question that they can't answer. I'd try and get them to, you know, test them out, see if, if they really are real or not real. But nobody does that to me, which is interesting. Nobody tries to challenge me. No one, no one. I mean, there are trolls, but you know, that's another funny thing. The trolls never come to the live streams. Trolls are comfortable leaving comments in the comments field, but they're not comfortable coming to a live stream and participating with the chat. Which tells me they are, to use a Russian word, speaking of foul language, I would call them suka. See, right now, we just had 15 viewers. Not one of those 15 individuals saw fit to leave a comment or anything. Oh, whoa. Hold on a minute. Wow, something happened to my internet. Because all of a sudden, I see all these comments. Holy shit. My bad. I apologize, folks. I do. Please forgive me. I'm not very technically savvy. I see all these comments that I missed. <laughs> if my face didn't hurt so bad, I'd slap myself right now. All right, let me get to these comments. Sorry, folks. Really, truly, from the bottom of my heart, I'm sitting here going off and for no reason. Okay, let's see. Uh, corporate figure, okay. I think David said it about agent. I was being cheeky, but I might be very wrong. Or maybe Mark K said it. As far as the gentleman thing goes, the agent, I know Mark lowercase K Kishon Christopher said that. I know that for a fact because I heard him say it. Never heard of it. You never heard of Romley Stewart, Jonathan. G T F O, bro. Man, please Google his name and watch some of his, his videos. All right, I got nothing against the guy personally. He's got a lot of knowledge to share, and it's along the same lines as what you like to study, Jonathan. So I highly recommend uh, doing a YouTube search of his name. And also search Glossa channel, G-L-O-S-S-A channel. It's right up your alley, man. I think you'll really dig it. Romley has a lot of knowledge about Latin and styles manuals and things like that. And he's an awesome guitar player. He is a fantastic guitar player. The only issue I've ever had with him is that he dismisses quantum grammar because he doesn't know shit about it. And like most people that don't know shit about it, but fancy themselves to be intelligent individuals, they just dismiss it out of hand because they, they can't get it like that. It's not simple for them, so they just dismiss it. What, what is it that we do with things that we don't know about or the unknown? We get afraid of it, and so we dismiss it. We uh, minimize it. We try and get rid of it. Is the guy who says all day when Miller claims are nonsense? Now, I don't know if Romley said that. I really don't know. I mean the attorney. Uh, I don't know that, uh, law talk with Mike. I don't know if that guy said that, uh, I don't even know if he knows who David Wynn Miller is. I just know that he does reaction videos to sovereign citizens in court. Yes, I've studied the Roman Justinian deception. Oh, okay, so you do know who it is. Harry Knoxville. Hi, Jason. I just heard that MKC is in prison. 
And on May 5th, there is a peaceful assembly taking place outside where it is being held. Really? Well, Harry Knoxville, thank you very much for that, brother. And I call Harry brother because he is a, a student of mine, and he's also a friend, and I, I would like to call him brother because I honor him with that. I have uh, much honor for the man. We've developed a rapport. Uh, however, Harry Knoxville is a nom de guerre that he uses on YouTube, and anything that he says, um, I know he's not going to bullshit me. So if he says that there's a peaceful assembly taking place on May 5th outside of where MKC is in prison, then that's what's going to happen. Well, this is interesting. Oh, by the way, David was also in prison. True. The peaceful protest is apparently being organized by Rob the Cat, the Rat Catcher, if you know who he is. Rob the Rat Catcher? <laughs> I think videos about developing the correct psychology would be valuable. If you look at my uh, quantum grammar shoot playlist, which, bro, I have like, I want to say at least well over 100 videos in there. That's all about the psychology. I have a question. Why does David Wayne Miller sometimes write in all capital letters in his contracts? What is the meaning of that? Well, I mean, as far as David Wayne Miller goes, I know that he has passed away, so he's no longer here, but I would say you'd have to ask him why he uses all caps. I can't speak for the man. That is a trespass to speak for someone else. What is the correct place to do it? Where is the correct place to do it? To do what? Almost every question is already answered in your videos, except those we can't ask before getting closure on the grammar. Uh, the recent vid with Daywin Miller, he claims a number of people punctuate their name, presidents. Do you have any more closure on that anecdotal or other? No, die, I don't. Other than what he says, I have not found anyone in history who has punctuated their name the way that we do it with correct sentence structure. No one. No law of Mike. Message retracted. What happened, bro? Okay, so, whoa, sorry about that. All right, so I'm caught up with the messages. I apologize. I didn't notice that. I just had top message, messages on, so now, now it's back on to all messages. So go ahead, comment, please. Again, my sincerest apologies, viewers. Um, return is correct word. In the context of correct sentence structure, no, it is not because RE means no. So that literally means no turn. Return is not a correct term. Thanks for showing. I've always been intrigued by bees and liquid gold. Cheers. Feel better and have a great weekend. Thank you very much. Be Being a bee steward is, is definitely rewarding. And the honey is great. Thanks. I have searched too. Never found any correct punctuation. Die, I do have a video where I look at a map. I want to say it was a Mercator map where there is some semblance of similarity to correct sentence structure in the way the artist punctuated their name, but it's not correct sentence structure. From actual first-hand knowledge, what you said about Kata is true as well, but there's no opponent I've listened to the first 100 Quantum Grammar Shoot audios. Kudos, I'm speaking about. So how then can I return in correct way? Well, first, the first thing I would suggest is learn correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, and then you can choose how to phrase that. Intermediate psychology between Babel and quantum. 
Hello, Dennis Thompson. One thing I can suggest to you about the return thing is simply go to a thesaurus, type in the word return, and then look at the synonyms, and then choose a positive performance synonyms that contains no particle negation, and use that. That's one way to do it. No such thing as rebuild. There's to destroy and build again. Well, destroy is also no contract, okay? Because DE means no. As in defrost means no frost. Destroy means no Troy. Again, folks, I recommend getting closure on the grammar. So Oki, Jonathan, Dennis. I can't pronounce that individual's name that was asking about the return. All you folks, if you are serious about learning the grammar, you want answers to your questions, contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and apply for workshops, man. This is a question for viewers. Who here has basic QG closure? Well, Di, I can tell you one thing. If she's still here, April is one of my top students, just as you are, Di, just as Harry Knoxville is. Who else? April, Di, and Harry Knoxville are all top tier students by my certification. Well, I mean, we're, we're talking in a correct sentence structure context here as far as using correct sentence structure in a contract. You would not use particles of negation in your contracts. But in the fiction, if I tell someone to, if I build a Lego model and then I break and smash it and I tell someone to rebuild it they know what I'm talking about build it again it was built once let's build it again in the fiction you can use those terms it makes sense but in correct sentence structure you have to be a little more savvy about it okay have you have you done your research have you looked it up in an etymology dictionary I don't follow you okay um, because we are, like right now, you are communicating using adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble. So that is the domain that you are in. So how is there no action is rebuilt? Because there is. In the fiction. You cannot rebuild and rebuild is not to build again. Actually, rebuild is to build again. If you look it up in an etymology dictionary. Rebuild actually means to break and build again. RE means again. And build means to build. So rebuild literally means in the fiction to build again. Hello, Jason. I've seen a couple of YouTube people talking about English letters be used to make spells magic. What do you think on the subject? I don't know. I don't know. I don't. You'd have to be a little more specific about that, Dennis. I don't know what you mean. Uh, I know that spelling is spelling, right? But I'm not sure what it, what uh, what you're getting at there. Please be more specific. There's no such action to rebuild. You never rebuild. You built a house, then you broke it, and then you built again, but you never rebuilt anything. There's no such action to build. All right, if you say so, Oki, that's up to you, if that's what you want to participate with. Me, I'm very practical. I'm not here to be misunderstood or to misunderstand anybody. If that's how you want to, you know, live your life, if people want to participate with your meaning of rebuild or non-meaning of rebuild, that's up to them. I personally and with the practicality, with the ease of the communication. 
Again, I'm not here to be misunderstood or to misunderstand anyone else. If I tell someone, if, if they broke their house and I ask them to rebuild it, they know exactly what I'm talking about and they can do it. What's the problem? Okay, the closest phrase I can think of for rebuild might be once more, but once is negative. So should we search or research to find facts? Well, I highly recommend learning the grammar, especially folks like Dennis and Oki, because they're mitigating over, well, by my perception, you're mitigating over trifles, really. If you learn correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, this won't even be an issue. It won't even be something to talk about. It wouldn't even be something that comes up. Di Cameron can attest to this. It really distills everything down to its simplest form. The only time people argue about anything is when it has to do with fiction, which is what we're doing with rebuild. Oki has one way of looking at it. I have the way I like to look at it. I look at it in a very practical day-to-day -day manner. I'm not trying to use word games on anybody. I'm being as straightforward as I can using the language that is most effective so that the other contract party cognizes what I'm explaining to them. And if rebuild is the word I use, it's the word I use and they usually know what I mean. I'm not going to lecture them on grammar. <laughs> A friend of yours from Spain recommended that I talk to you. I'm about to join. A friend of yours from Spain. Well, I only have one man that I consider a friend from Spain. So that must be who you're talking about. Um, so now you're talking to me, so mission accomplished. For the build, book a workshop, dudes. <laughs> it's not word game. I will email you about it. The mojitos one. Ah, Ivandian. Again, just like die in April. One of my top students, Ivandian. And Harry Knoxville. Ivandian is, matter of fact, Ivandian is special because he is literally working on translating quantum grammar from English to Spanish. Hats off to that guy. Parse is fun as it takes ages to get closure and knowledge of the complexities. Keep it up. The thing about Parse, too, is, and this is the part that people don't really, they're not really fond of, is the work that needs to be put into it. The repetitiveness of it. The more you look things up, the more you will remember it. And the more tools you will have on your tool belt. Yes, he's translating everything. He's quite good. I'd say he's beyond quite good. I'd say he's exceptional. I'd say he's fantastic. Fantastical. Muy bueno. And he's a great, great man. I have much honor for him. <clears throat> and I find that with most people that stick with this and actually get closure on it, they're good people. They're solid people. They're honorable people. Every single one of them. So that gives me confidence in the
in the sacredness of this grammar. Not to get weird about it or anything, but I hold the grammar as sacred. And I don't know anyone who has closure on the grammar that has a malicious intent or malicious volition. They're all good people. Di Cameron, are you still here? When I use any online, I don't come to the same conclusions as you do sometimes. I know I need more practice workshops. Do you create seminars to purchase? Uh, if you want to, I, I have one seminar that I did back in August of last year. I guess if you'd like access to that, you can email me and request it, and I'll give you the information on how to get that. I'll give you a link to where you can download that video. Uh, bro, there's like 900 videos on this channel. If you want to study Parse, just look at the Parse playlist. And it's also... Uh, when you look at the part, when you when you look at the entry entry on etymology online, if you see something that says "see also blah blah blah," you have to look at that too. You have to go back to the earliest nativity root meaning of the word through a continuance of the evidence. That's the only simple rule that that I preach. Once is negative since it starts with the letter O. Once is negative because it's a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of the word. So the word one is also negative. That is correct. Vowel in front of a consonant. Okay, if you would take a little bit of time to sift through the channel, you will find that I did a salvage on the OE digraph so when you see me writing correct sentence structure, you will see me write out the word one instead of O-N-E, I use O-E-N, which is two vowels in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word, which is positive performance. My name is Ari, I'm glad I'm not negative. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Uh, there are three principles that I teach the balance of the honor and the grace, the position of peace and neutrality, the maintenance of rule and rule equal. So with the balance of the honor and the grace, folks that have a name that start with a vowel in front of a consonant, they have no control over that. That was a name that was given to them, and so they get a pass. Diagraph is the same as a diphthong. Jonathan, I'd have to say that you have not done any research on that. <laughs> if you're saying that, it is absolutely not the same thing as a diphthong. I don't use diphthongs. Diphthongs are actually modifiers. So I choose not to use them, but it's digraph. And that's when two vowels, it has more to do with the audio quality of something. But again, I have videos on that too. You can check that out. But it's digraph, not diphthong. Ari in Hebrew means my light. Ari like aura. Right. AU words are very powerful, like authority. Or AU as the, on the table of of elements means gold.
OE of red as being a diphthong. OE can be a diphthong if you connect the O with the E. It can be a diphthong. But again, you have to do your research and, and find out what a diphthong is, actually. There's other ones like A and E, like equal. I use A and E. But because so many people, so many people got their panties in a bunch because I was connecting the A to the E and all that stuff, I stopped doing it. Now I just spell it A-E-Q-U-A-L or one, I spell O-E-N. I don't connect them anymore. I mean, because quite frankly, it's a pain in the butt to do that on a keyboard and a lot of people a little upset about that yeah see you don't know how to type it there are all kinds of keyboard gymnastics you have to go through to type that using the alt key and this key and that key is goofy it's like trying to type a long dash and a short dash and a hyphen it's not necessary i mean with the with the the dashes, it is necessary to be able to type a long dash or a short dash because there is a difference between a hyphen and a dash. The dash is longer than the hyphen. The hyphen is used to connect compound facts. The dash is used for something different. And a long dash is never used in correct sentence structure. I mean, unless you're using it in the sense of uh, brackets or something like that. We didn't have closures about why we write in brackets. I would love to know what is the meaning of doing that. Okay, I highly recommend look up in your YouTube search bar why I use brackets. Type those words in, why I use brackets. And my video will pop up from five years ago giving you full closure on that. This was an awesome live stream. I appreciate everybody who joined and participated. I will take this one and the one before it and edit them hopefully into a cohesive whole, take out the gobbledygook and the dead space. And uh, thank you, Ray Parr. Peace. And I'll publish it in the public. The original versions of the videos, the raw versions, will be available in the members section, you members out there. We'll have infinite access to it, as with the other live streams. And again, remember, any question you have, 99.9% .9 of the time can be answered by just doing a simple YouTube search on my channel. Peace. Thank you very much. Much honor and humility.